I'm John, uh, KK1X, and I'm from AIR. Let me start up the presentation here. I don't know why it fades in like that. I tried to get it to stop that. And I've been doing POTA for just mm -hmm. over a year. I started like last September. Um, why do we want to do POTA? Well, I do it primarily because it's fun. Sure, you can, you know, uh, you could do antenna testing. You keep the bands busy and that sort of stuff. And you do it ex exposed ham radio to what, what I like to term the muggles. But, um, I do it primarily because it's fun. Uh, how to get started. There's a play or a website, poda.app. It's a weird website name, but that's, that's what it is. You go there, you register, um, for an account and that account lets you to be a hunter, which as a guy who looks for people doing the activations and for the activators, the guys that actually go out into the parks. Um, POTA uses Amazon Cognito for identification purposes. If you have a problem with Amazon, you might not want to play. Um, dum, 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 dum. When you sign up, you're probably going to have Hunter contacts already in your account because you don't know that you've worked some guy that happens to be playing POTA in a park. So you'll have contacts all ready to go. Well, yeah. So that means that if somebody is operating, they're not announcing their POTA, but they're operating the contacts or something like that. Yeah. They make the contact with you that they it's uploaded as a POTA contact, and you've made the contact and didn't even know. Yeah, yeah. You've made the contact, and it just kind of happens in the background. You might already have awards <laughs> accumulated once you end up, once you sign up. Um, yeah, there are rules, but the rules are very simple. It's basically be courteous, be nice, follow the D or the, you know, the DX code of conduct, does that sort of stuff. Um, and you have to actually be in a park when you are activating the park. You can't be near a park. You can't be adjacent to a park. You can't be, you know, you know, you have to be in the park actually. Um, and when you're done activating, submit a log. That's the only way the whole system keeps working. Yes, Dennis? Yeah, the, the park. Now, does it have to be a recognized Yes, I'll get to that. I'll get to that. Um, blah, blah, blah. So it's the rules. Um, as I mentioned, there are awards. There are awards for everything. If you make if you make ten contacts to different parks, you get an award. If you make contacts from ten different parks, you get another award. So it, it, they're meaningless and they're silly, but uh, a lot of people like awards. They like to print out those little certificates and crumple them up, staple them to the wall, so that insulates their shack. Um, basic gear needs. To, to do this, you need a radio, a battery, an antenna, and a notepad to log your contacts. You can get a whole lot fancier. Um, the, the radios you're going to want to use are, tend to be the lighter ones, although I've seen some people bringing like 7300s out into the field. That's a bit much. They take a lot of power. But um, I use an Alicraft KX3. A lot of, uh, a lot of people are using the, the Zygu ch Chinese radios. Uh, Yesu makes a number of smaller radios that are lightweight. Uh, some of them are QRP, but they're easy to take out into the field. And then ICOM has the new 705, which is a uh, fairly light, it, albeit expensive alternative. For antennas, I couldn't, I couldn't resist the stock image. <laughs> Most of the work is done on 20 and 40 meters, although you'll see 15 and 10 sometimes, rarely 80, and I don't think I've ever seen anything on, on 160. Um, there are a lot of YouTube videos, so you can see how other people are, are dealing with antennas, but you have to sort through the chaff. You have to look through a lot of videos and see which ones the you other know, people are truthful or intelligent, or the really stupid people. That happens a lot. Um, 
antenna supports. I like to use trees whenever possible, but I have uh, fiberglass masts as well that I can uh, attach to the support that I drive on, drive my car onto. Yeah, it's just a piece of two by eight, I think, uh, and I screwed a pipe flange to it, and then I screw a pipe into that, and then I can put my mast over that or tie it off with a rope. It's pre it's stable enough. Um, it, I've been through some fairly windy events, and it's held up, so it's not bad. Um, Battery power is the way to go, obviously, because you're not going to find a, an electrical outlet out in the woods. And you don't want to carry the lead-acid batteries around anymore. So uh, the life, uh, L-I-F-E-P-O, the lithium fo or lithium iron phosphate, I think they're called. Um, that's the way I go. I've got two of these batteries. Um, to, to size the battery for your operation, you have to take into account how much time you're going to be transmitting, how much time you're going to re be receiving, and how much your transmitter draws during each of those cycles. And, you know, you just figure that out, how, how much average current you're going to be drawing over the course of an hour, and then determine how many hours you want to be out and size your battery accordingly. Um, I've got a, a, uh, a battery just like this. Uh, oh, no, no, it's a 20 amp hour, not the 15 amp hour. So, it, and that lasts me like more than a week without even really denting the power. <laughs> Say again, George? 10 watts. Um, my gear specifically, um, I typically use the Elecraft KX3 running at 10 watts, and I typically run FT8 because I don't like talking to people, as you can probably tell from this. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I, I have, I have a, a, a USB interface from the computer to the radio. It's called uh, a DigiRig, and it's made by another ham out in, I think he's out in California, but I forget. Um, I use an NFED half-wave antenna a lot, although I've been lately using a, an antenna called a Rybikoff, um, I'll get to that in a second. But I've got two fiberglass masts, uh, the Bioleno batteries, two different sizes. I bought the big one because the Groton Road Race was coming up and I needed to power two or three transceivers for the duration of the race. So I went with the big one. And Doug, you use Anderson Power Poles? I use Anderson Power Poles for everything. <laughs> well, everything not RF. <laughs> Okay. John, I sure. So I, I started out in the FDA. One of the things I started with making sure my time is as accurate as possible. Yes. How do you deal with that? Well, there are two ways. Um, I I have a GPS puck. Yeah, I use a GPS puck, and that just looks at the satellites, figures out the time to close enough, and it also figures out my position, so I can plug my position in. There's also uh, I think it's called JT Sync. If you don't have a time base like this, you run, as you're running WSJTX, you run this JT Sync program and it listens and it figures out, it, it assumes that everybody else is correct and you're wrong and it figures out the delta time and then you can use that to correct your clock to get your timing back on track. So do you use a specific piece of software with your clock? Yeah, uh, I forget the name of it, but it's it's written by some some guy in Australia, I think. I'm something or other. I think I have that. Yeah, it's VK something or other. It, but I, I don't off the top of my head, I don't know the name of it. It works. So, um, uh, my antennas change over time. Uh, currently, I'm using the Rybikoff. It's, it's very simple. It's 28 feet of wire going up, four to one balance, three radials. Bob's your uncle. Um, I had a par N fed that was working on 40, 20, and 10, but somehow it died. I think I tried to use it on 15, which wasn't good for it. Um, so it's dead. I'm awaiting a replacement from uh, Tim N9SAB. Um, I hear good things about his stuff. 
I also build a lot of my own antennas. The uh, One of the antennas we've been using for field day is an NFED half wave. I've got that out in the field sometimes as well. Um, and I have started using dipoles, it's a very simple antenna. Put a choke in there, they work gangbusters. Um, logging is, is not much of an issue. You have to maintain a log. You have to keep a log to play POTA. It's the only nice way to do it. And WSJTX, the FT8 program I use, does its own logging. It produces an ADIF file on its own, and those are just about ready for submission as is. If I work another mode, I have to use another logging program, and I typically use hammers, which five bucks, it, you can have it on a PC, you can have it on your iPhone or your Android. Yes, Nathan? Perhaps not. Yeah. Okay, it might be, it might well be free on computers, but for five bucks, uh, it's not, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, uh, N3FJP also has logging software that he writes. He started off writing uh, logging programs as a hobby, but it turned into a big thing. Now, he, his wife, and their son all write computer logging software as a business. So I, I don't use his software, but I did buy it just to support the guy. Um, and, of course, N1MM Plus uh, is free, uh, runs on most platforms, not phones. Um, and I think it can be coerced to play POTA and, and generate POTA, POTA logs. Yeah, Jim was saying that. Jim was saying he was using that uh, down at uh, W1AW the other day. Finding locations. This is the important part. There's, they go to the POTA.app. They have a map selection in their menu. And it will just bring up a map with all these little yellow dots. And those are all parks. They don't necessarily correspond to exactly where the park is. Uh, because some of the parks, I think this one is the Nashua, Nissitissit, and Squanicook River Valley animal rescue area or something. But it runs from like Brookline all the way down into Lancaster, Mass. Anywhere along the river, you can sit up, you know, set up at a, a station and say, I'm working this park. <sighs> Even though you have to cut down the trees. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, you don't cut down the trees, you use them to support your antenna. Okay. Um, Mass DCR has pretty good information about their parks. Their information about the forests is quite lacking, and a lot of the information from POTA pointing to the mass forests point to a hacked site. <laughs> you, know, the, you know, the browser will pop up and say, oh, you don't want to go here, and then you click it. Yeah, I do. You know, and it's you know, like weird Arabic writing or something. Um, so I don't know. New Hampshire State Parks, they do a great job of of detailing where their parks are, what their boundaries are, because that's really important because you have to work within the park. Um, there's All Trails is a pretty good website. There's also an application on the phone that you can use. Google Maps is always reasonably good. Uh, USGS, the geodetic survey people, they've got great maps. And it's a wonderful, wonderful place just to look around even beyond POTA. And there's also GIS data from all of the states, and that's quite extensive. <laughs> site amenities. Sometimes you get into a state forest, there will be actual toilets. Sometimes it's port loos Sometimes it's nothing. Uh, it's usually pretty seasonal, like most of the parks have their stuff shut down now. There might be a port loo still out there. Uh, out in the forest, eh, you're on your own. You know what you have to do. Yes. Well, yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, station set up, if you find a tree and a picnic table, it's just a perfect opportunity. 
I did that the other day at uh, uh, Pearl Hill up in uh, Townsend. Yeah. Yeah. So I was up there and just sat down at a picnic table, threw a line up at a tree, play radio. Uh, but I carry a folding table and a folding chair in the car just so I can, you know, not, because if you sit in the car playing radio, you look kind of creepy. If you're sitting out, sitting out amongst the people, you look okay. Yeah. How long do you typically spend on a study? Um, I'll do it for like a, an hour minimum usually. You know, I try to, you have to get at least 10 contacts to make it an activation. But, you know, if it, if the contacts are still rolling in, I'll just sit there if I don't have anything pressing to do. Um, and as long as there's still contact, you know, still, as long as there's still people out there, I'll hang around. Um, when you're out there, you want to present a positive image for ham radio. You just don't be creepy. Be nice. Dog biscuits are good. You always have some milk notes for the dogs because there are a lot of people walking their dogs in the woods. Um, and once you get set up, you just start calling CQ. Uh, CQ for FT8. You just you just say your call sign and your grid square. There's no room in the exchange for the park, for the most part. There are some people out there that you know change messages on the fly to do that, but uh, that's too complex for me. CW, um, I don't operate CW, but I think the exchange is pretty much the same thing. They probably include the park number. And then sideband ops, did they just start calling out CQ, parks on the air, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Right. No, it's not. And I was going to mention, too, that you, you call CQ POTA, but you also just call CQ. Because it you, you don't have to say your POTA to have the contact count for you or for them. <clears throat> and some people won't contact you because you're saying POTA and they don't know what it is, so they stay away. So if you just call CQ, they might call you. Do you find it more people call you when you say POTA or when you don't? <laughs> I find more people call me when I quit calling CQ and I'm getting ready to go to a different band or quit for the day, that's when people call you. <laughs> so it's not like you can call them or doesn't want to call them because you're calling CQ Coda, okay? Or, or, a, or a casual FDA operator um, doesn't want to call him because he's looking for a reaction. You don't get reactions in FDA. Yeah, I, I, I realize so that. I know that he's had a number of activations, and I'm curious from one activation to another if he did, if he didn't use code on one and he did on the other, if there's any correlation. Well, no, I'll just switch it up during in the middle of an activation. I won't make it, you know, purely POTA and purely not POTA. I just I just switch it up. To, I do. I will call other stations sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. The the late shift. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's all those people. It's all those people that want to insulate their shacks with the awards. Yeah. <laughs> Clayton Harvard, Clayton near the river. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, I do that all. I yeah, I've done there like a dozen times. Yeah, it's a great, it's a great place. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, after you're done, submit a log. I mean, that's that's really all you need to do. You have to up upload your log. I have a question. Sure. Some of the expeditions go to sites that are photo. For example, the Nevada Island one few years ago. Nevada Island is administered by the National Wildlife Service. It's a photo. Okay. Have you come across any PX stations? In I have not. I wouldn't have known if I did. 
So, um, and you know, there are a bunch of links here. Jim's going to have the slides uh, up on, or at least you know, in the presentation, so you can copy them down uh, from that, or you can uh, send me an email, and I'll I'll send you a copy of the slides, or I'll post them somewhere. Is there a, like a rarity of a, of a site that you go to that some people might contact you more at than others? Um, no, I don't think so. There are site. There are places that have not been activated. You know, there was a, a Grant State Park up north of uh, Royalston, hadn't been activated. So I hiked in and activated it. But I got my ten contacts, and the mosquitoes beat me back. But nothing magical happened from it. <laughs> no. Well, you can you can spot yourself too. There's a spotting mechanism. Yeah, true, but it's it's like a big DSCC poster that only people would watch. Exactly. Some people will hunt in all parts of the state and like like you like you were just saying, so you know, yeah, one part that's never been activated. Some people just wait for it. And if you put it on they have a Facebook page for that as well as the uh, so if you put down there, hey, I'm activating whatever this park is that's been activated. Right. There's a good chance that you're going to have a lot of people that are coming out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's really about it. Can I remember the actually found that anyone would be actually in the end? Not to my knowledge. The, uh, no, no, no. The, for the for the 100th anniversary, the league came up with NPOTA, National Parks on the Air, and then a couple of other Americans, I, I forget their call signs, but they said, oh, this is a great program. Let's do, let's make it just POTA. So I don't think it started in England, but I could be wrong. Most of the websites have a document pay in them. Yeah. 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 Yeah